the Beach 40 video series part 6. In parts 1 to 5 I described the Beach 40 transceiver and various modifications of it. It's now a year since then and it's time for a Mark II version. It's the same basic circuitry but there's three main improvements. The new Beach 40 is about half the height of the original Beach 40, though it does occupy a slightly larger footprint. I find the flatter cabinet is easier to fit into small bags like this when taking portable. I've gone for the trail friendly format with the controls easily accessible while you're sitting on the ground. The internal construction is quite different to the Beach 40 Mark 1. I'm using a plastic box instead of a metal box. However, there are metal partitions formed by printed circuit board material, which also doubles as the mounting board for the various stages. One of the things I've tried to do is make the construction reasonably neat and to keep wires short. It helps if you design the board so that as many of the inputs, outputs and power connections are possible are near the top, so you can just take the lid off and gain easy access for testing. Mounted on the back of the tuning capacitor is a VFO, comprising a ceramic resonator on 7.2 MHz and a buffer stage. The rest of the circuitry is mounted on three double-sided printed circuit boards. They neatly fit the slots already in the box, so there is no drilling and putting in spaces to mount the circuit boards. Both the copper sides are unetched and form the earth connection, therefore they should be connected together with small jumper wires, as you might just be able to see running across the edge of the board connecting the two sides. The next board along is the balance modulator, which doubles as a product detector on receive. Sharing that board is the transmit microphone amplifier stage. All these stages are as per the original Beach 40. The next board along, also two stages, one is the new RF receiver preamp, just a single BC548, and the first amplifier in the transmitter power amplifier chain. Finally, we've got the driver, the power amplifier, which are both BD139s, and the transmit receive relay circuit. That's just a double pole double throw relay as in the original set. I'm pointing to now the Pi network, which is the low pass filter. That's in circuit in both transmit and receive. An addition is the L match antenna coupler, inbuilt in the transceiver to save space. The radio actually has two antenna sockets, an SO239 for low impedance 50 ohm antennas and two binding posts for an end fed wire antenna, which is high impedance if it's the usual half wave long. With that type of antenna, you don't need much of a radio or counterpoise for the antenna to be reasonably efficient. You can tell that it's high impedance because when you touch the antenna socket, the signal drops greatly. To tune the antenna in, you just adjust the tuning capacitor shaft. I didn't bother adding a knob as it's near enough to a preset control. How do you tune the thing up without an SWR meter? For the first couple of goes, I suggest a little field strength meter that you can hold near the antenna wire and adjust the tuning capacitor for maximum deflection when you're talking. You should find after a couple of goes that the maximum signal out coincides with the maximum signal on receive. Just recapping, the output L match is very simple. Just a 6.8 microhenry moulded RF choke and across the antenna binding post a tuning capacitor to ground with a maximum capacitance of around 200 picofarad. I'd recommend that as an addition in any 40 meter QRP transceiver as it makes it a lot more versatile when you're operating it out in the field and it saves the bulk of an antenna coupling unit. Another use for the Velcro straps that are now my favourite for mounting the squid pole. They help hold the antenna wire on the reel. This is the circuit of the RF preamp. Two resistors are required. 100k, although it can be 150k, and 4.7k. For the capacitors, the input capacitor 1 nanofarad, and the output is 18 picofarad. 
There's also a 100 nanofarad bypass capacitor to earth. The input of the RF preamp goes straight to the transmit receive relay contacts and the output goes to the balance modulator or product detector as it's used in this receiver. Yeah, beautiful day here today, it's blue sky and sunshine. Um, I'm just sitting back in a nice warm shack in a cold northwestern Tasmania. But yeah, you're uh, smoking here, mate, uh, five and one. So that's very good audio. You can watch the stuff inside there. One to go three Yankee Echo Portable, BK3EJ. G'day, the name here is Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, and I'm located in Cobram. Yeah, you're on the Yankee Echo Portable, BK3EJ. Yeah, you're on the Yankee Echo Portable, BK3EJ. Alright, uh, not uh, strong, but uh, I've seen uh, happy, uh, you uh, you're uh, just on a portable there, so you're uh, about an S, uh, S3, I'll, I'll get a, um, an accurate reading on the next uh, round. Well, no worries, Peter, portable on the beach. Yeah, you're about 5 and 9. Uh, had the present up into um, South Western VK2. But that little radio sounds fantastic. I wouldn't be whinging about that. The audio quality is quite good. In actual fact, then the frequency stability is quite good. That's probably. Uh, I'd have to say the job you've done yourself there is better than some of them kits that guys are playing around with. They tend to wobble around all over the place in the audio a lot. So that's part six of the Beach 40 series. If you're building a Beach 40 from scratch, I'd suggest building the basic rig without the additional features. Then, once you get it going right, then build the additional features and enjoy their benefits.